This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week 18 slate of games is getting more intriguing by the day because we now know that I think the Bengals and the Ravens are going to go full out with the possibility for that uh, that second round matchup and the first round matchup being at a neutral site. I feel like the NFL has tweaked this thing in a pretty good way, which means we're going to have a lot of motivation for a good number of teams in week 18. We're going to break down where you can find value in the prop market based on that by talking to Tom Vecchio, getting his read on week 18 and let you know where you can find value in the prop market over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tommy, of course, is a senior writer uh, or a writer for us over at NumberFire.com. Does our daily ISO NBA DFS podcast. Does a lot of stuff for NBA TV. NHL work. Tom is all across the board, but he's here with us today. Breakdown week 18. Tom, a happy final regular week of the regular week of the regular season to you. How you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I think this is arguably one of the most interesting weeks besides uh, opening week, which uh, I'll touch on uh, once we get into things. But I think, you know, no, like having all your like uh, your, your T's crossed, your I's dotted, whatever it might be, and knowing the scenarios for different teams is vital this week. Uh-huh. Absolutely important. Yeah, it is vital to the point where you should not try to work out scenarios on a spreadsheet like I did yesterday morning and butchered it. So trust the NFL. Let them tell you what's on the line. You know, trust their PR staff. Don't do it yourself. Uh, But luckily, it is all known now with the the scenarios being voted on for today. We kind of know how things will break down. I think that's a key thing to know. And I think for me, at least, I'm handling the Bengals and Ravens as if they're going to go all out. I think the Bills will do the same because... They don't want to be the three seed um, with that game against the Bengals. So I feel like both these teams will push hard for all four quarters. And that is important data to have entering week 18. We'll break down what that means, how to apply this, how to handle like your bankroll in week 18 as well in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering this spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our national championship preview, TCU versus Georgia, is up with Dr. Ed Fang. Find that on the FanDuel YouTube page and the Covering the Spread podcast. He'd also had Ryan Williams back on the show uh, yesterday to break down week 18 in the NFL. His thoughts on spreads, money lines, totals that he likes for this week. Both those up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page. So to get those as they are posted, make sure you you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts and if you like what you hear leave us a rating and review as well looking to get more out of the nfl this season well now is the perfect time to download fanduel america's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars that's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win just download the fanduel sportsbook app it is safe secure and super easy to use then you can bet on everything from the money line to touchdown scores to over under yards plus fanduel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in free bets when you join FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, Tom, I did want to start here by talking about your approach to week 18, because I personally don't have as much on the line this week. And I'm fine with that. I, I'm OK with that. But I wanted to ask you, do you pull back in how much you bet in week 18, given the uncertainty? Or does the prospect of the books being wrong and being there more there being more variance? That, does that actually draw you in as someone who is very in tune with the news? Uh, I It actually draws me in. I think this week and opening week, as I mentioned, all for the biggest edges because you know if you're following training camp reports coming into the season 
and you see player props that, you know, a, a receiver's prop is at 40 and, you know, you're reading reports that he's expected to play a much larger role and this game has a high over under and all these sorts of things like 40 is not the right line or whatever it might be. So I think there's an edge at the very beginning of the season when roles are somewhat undefined in the, in the books, the lines are wrong. And I think this week specifically, obviously, there's a big edge and, with so much news, I want to be looking at the spots uh, in terms of the players that I'm going and then eliminating all the teams that are obviously out of the playoffs and have no right. motivation or, or locked into the playoffs and they can't move up or down like the Bucs or essentially the Vikings. And then I want to focus in and kind of double down on the teams and the players that have a lot of motivation to play. So it actually draws me in more to have heavier exposure to the players that are in must-win spots. Yeah, so you are narrowing your list down, not dealing with the the nonsense, but on the games where everything matters, you feel better about your approach there. And I think that actually does make sense because it's easier to predict how teams will play things if there's everything on the line. That's why I love like playoff DFS because we're not going to see teams messing around with like a third string running back getting, you know, third down snaps. We're going to see snap rates increase on running backs and stuff like that. So I think that that thought process makes a lot of sense because this is effectively now playoffs. And I think that that is interesting. So narrowing down the list, but still having the regular amount of confidence with the games that are left remaining. Now you kind of alluded to this. Uh, there are some teams out there like the Bucks. The Giants may not play anyone at all. Like they might just not bother. I think the Bucks will start Tom Brady, though, it sounds like. And we could have teams like the Chargers that could have nothing to play for, maybe the Vikings. I think they'll still push for the two seed, but you know, there's some risk there at least. When you got those teams that might start their starters, but then pull them later on, are you looking to grab unders potentially in those games? Or are they just full, full of voids for you? I mean, this is also something props get posted because they might just say F it and not not post them at all. Right. That that last point is the most important one. Will props be available at all? You know, there was a report on Tuesday or Wednesday where Todd Bowles, the head coach for the Bucs, said that, uh, you know, Brady could be starting, might be starting, and they would rotate, uh, you know, Kyle Trask in, rotate Blaine Gabbard in. It's like, they're going to have three quarterbacks. It's like, I want every under, under available for Tom Brady if they're posted, which they're obviously not posted yet. That's a spot that I would absolutely love to look. Uh, so if... Uh, Kirk Cousins is posted. I might consider taking an under depending on what the line is. Obviously there's timing with that game. Uh, you know, if they're going to be pushing for the two seed, but I would take every under available. I possibly could if the players are not expected to play, assuming the lines are posted. So it's a very touch and go situation. And it's like ultimately wait and see because we just don't have these lines, but I am going to be heavy on unders if they are posted. I think the one that would be interesting for the Vikings is uh, Dalvin Cook and Justin Jefferson unders. I know Jefferson is chasing the yardage record. I think with it being as high as it is, I don't think they're going to go for it. I think they're going to care more about the postseason than that. And the reading Kevin O'Connell's quotes earlier on this week, he said, we're not going to be as like, you know, we're not going to pull starters fully it, with the two seats on the line because they want the two seats. I think Kirk Cousins right. will play the entire game, but I think that we could see Dalvin Cook get a 60, 50% snap rate versus his typical around 80%. We could see Justin Jefferson get rotated out with more KJ Osborne. I have feeling in the mix. Uh, Jalen Naylor might play more in this game. So I think that's the way we'll see the, the changes there, which means if people steam up Justin Jefferson chasing the, the yardage record, that's where I think the unders are in play. So Jefferson, Dalve, I think specifically are the guys where I could see unders being very lively. Again, if they get posted at all, which they, I wouldn't post it personally if I were a fan duel. Um, but I mean, you should, John, if you're listening. Um, but I, I don't think, I wouldn't be shocked if they just don't post this at all. But I think that Jefferson and Dalve specifically based on reading what O'Connell said, I think those are the guys where unders very, very lively. Now, those are not the fluid situations we're talking about for today. we got a lot of other fluid situations, you know, some backfields that may be in flux, uh, some passing games, stuff like that. When you're looking for fluid situations where you may see some volatility in the market, which situations are you targeting there? Uh, I think it comes with the – I think Chargers, Broncos is probably one of the best examples, uh, and that's simply due to the timing. And, and this is kind of just um, a, a scheduling thing. And like, there's no – I mean – Unless the, they played at the same time, and this would be the, referring to the Bengals and the Ravens, unless they played both at four o'clock. If the, what is it, this, if I have this right, if the Bengals beat the Ravens, then the Chargers clinch the five seed, and there's right. no reason for them to play any of their starters. Right. And that's the reason why you saw the spread move so heavily towards Denver. In, in um, crazy, crazy swing. Yeah. It was like, 
it was Chargers minus three for the entire time. And then once it became clear that Bengals Ravens are going to be played at, at 1 p.m., but also they weren't going to finish the uh, Charger, the, the Bengals Bills games, that's where you saw the movement heavily towards Denver. Right. So now Denver's, uh, was it two and a half, right? Still? Yeah. Yep. So it, it, that's a substantial move. So if the player props are posted, that would be great. But we just don't know that yet. And that is just a, a factor of the schedule. So that's one thing I, I would love. I would love to take potentially team total unders for the Chargers. Like if we see the Bengals pull out ahead and it's like, okay, maybe they're going to win this game. If I can get team totals for the Chargers under, that's a spot that I would go. In. I wouldn't expect Herbert to play. I wouldn't expect Eckler to play. Allen, Mike Williams, all these players would not expect. And, and ultimately it's like, it's not the best matchup for them to begin with. No. So that is absolutely one the Seahawks and, and the Lions are obviously also uh, another situation where if the Seahawks win, the Lions are out. Right. So And the Lions are playing on Sunday night football. So they will know before the game even starts whether or not they are have a shot at the postseason, which, again, is, is just a kind of a, a – it sucks because of the schedule. But if the Lions don't know – if the Lions know that they're out, where are they going to be going with their starters? I think they're going full bore because it's Dan Campbell. He's okay. a psycho. <laughs> so – you know, this, and this is, is from someone who has Lions plus four and a half. So take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> and and the Lions, uh, you know, the Packers defense has looked pretty solid over the past number of weeks. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I hate that we they're going to know prior to the game whether they're in the playoffs or not. But And I, I do agree with the Dan Campbell thing that they're, they should be going all out. Um, so I have interest in a lot of Seahawks players and a lot of Seahawks props. Um, and then I think Saturday slate is also very interesting. Yeah, what do you see on the Saturday slate? What do you uh, is that a situation you're targeting? Or do you, because there are props up for those games. Yeah, there are props up for games. Uh, one of them I'm gonna I'm gonna write about in the props article I do specifically for Saturday is gonna be Christian Kirk over 59 and a half receiving yards, and I think that this is the best of both worlds. Where not only are we we talking about motivation for teams to play, clinching playoff spots, clinching seating, et cetera, et cetera. We're also talking about motivation for players due to contract incentives, which is the other side of this, where even if a, a team's eliminated, a player's contract is very important. So Christian Kirk over 59 and a half receiving yards makes a lot of sense for multiple reasons. Jags have to win this game, right? It's a playoff game for them. They need to win the win this to win the division, make the playoffs. Number two, the Titans secondary is atrocious. We've seen it all year. They're bad. They're allowing a ton of yards to, to wide receivers. And number three, he has a contract incentive for – an over on yards right now, his contract incentive is he's at right now. He's at 78 total receptions and 1,009 receiving yards. He gets an additional $500,000 for 80 receptions. So only two more, and then an additional 500,000 for 1,100 yards. So he's 91 yards off uh, another contract incentive. I, I expect the two catches to get there, but it's the best of both worlds where we have the contract incentive. We have the motivation with the team to play. And I guess we also have an amazing match against the Titans secondary. So that's the spot that I would look. I would also go to Geno Smith over 238 passing yards. That's on Sunday, obviously. Um, going back to the, uh, I want to touch, touch on two things quick. The Titans thing, um, not only is their secondary bad, but they're getting a lot of their run stuffers back for this game. Jeffrey Simmons, um, didn't play last week for obvious reasons, um, you know, with they rested um, about a lot of people, <laughs> they rested everybody, but he's going to play for this week. Nico Autry also expect to be back this week. And that means that their ground, their rush defense, which is always good, is going to be even better this week than it has been, which means we're going to see Lawrence probably chucking it quite a bit. I think he had like 368 yards in their first matchup. And that was a game where they were down the first half, but they won decently comfortably he's a very good quarterback so i think that both kirk and zay jones are are very viable i want to go back to the lions too because you mentioned them as being a team that but could potentially set starters now when i see four and a half as a spread that tells me that FanDuel is accounting for the odds that the seahawks win their game and there's no motivation for the lions i think they're kind of using the money line on the seahawks side as being like a guide for the odds that the C- the lions don't try what's interesting though is that the prop market is different because they have Fandle has Jamal Williams rushing prop at 56 and a half. Jamal Williams, when Justin Jackson has been active and when DeAndre Swift has been had his snaps up, 
he has been well below that number. Um, his role had evaporated before last week. And granted, he looked great last week. And it is a Jamal Williams revenge game. I will let you know. But that's a big number for a guy whose role has been limited for a large chunk of the year. And it's not like it's sudden, they're suddenly in a must-win game. They've been playing must-win games since October with the way right, they started. Right. So I think that even though I think that the Lions play hard no matter what, that has been my firm stance all week. That number specifically, Jamal Williams under 56 and a half rushing yards, that seems really, really high uh, based on the way he's been used when they've had all their guys healthy. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. It, it does. Um, the question is, like, do you factor in, how much do you factor in the Dan Campbell and revenge game? It's like, all right, it's the last last game of the year. Might as well throw these players out there because ultimately, you know, if we take a, a – a further step back who's more important to the team swift or williams going forward well williams is a free agent i believe right so and that answers swift, your question right right so swift is obviously he's younger so they want to keep him long term so will will williams be out there for more just because at a certain point they're right. you know they may not have him next year so it doesn't matter right, right. Exactly. so i will say he does have a contract incentive Two hundred fifty thousand dollars when he hits one thousand rushing yards. He currently has nine hundred ninety four rushing yards. So he's six away. Six so I'm gonna take over over six and a half, um, or over five and a half. Uh, <laughs> if John Sheeran gives us that prop, I'll take it. So, you know, it, it's a again, it's a, a tricky situation just due to the schedule timing. Yeah, but I do see him in a large role if they are eliminated because Swift has already dealt with some injuries this year. His, his production has been up and down. They kind of um, seem to hate him too, which I, might I, factor I into it. <laughs> but what, like, why would they need to push him if they know right, they right. want to keep him long-term? Right. Whereas with Williams, like you said, free agent. So that's a, a different situation there. Um, I think with, yeah, I can see that being a concern for sure with him. But honestly, I think it, it's fascinating to look at the juxtaposition of the way the props are handled versus the way the, the spread is handled. Because I think, I don't know. I think four and a half says to me they expect the Lions not to try, um, which is not the way I'm viewing things. I could be very wrong. I've been very wrong plenty of times. This would not be a first thing, uh, a first time by any means. Okay, we talked about some yardage props there with Christian Kirk and Geno Smith. What about touchdown props? What you liking in that market? Uh, you know, I would go back to Christian Kirk at plus 210, which is, I, I think, a, a pretty solid number. Again, all the things I touched about, incentive, uh, motivation for the team, great matchup versus the Titans. They should be pushing the ball downfield via the passing game instead of the running game. Plus two ten is pretty solid. Um, Digs at plus one twenty five uh, is the one I want, want your opinion on. It's obviously not the easiest matchup, but the Bills clearly do have motivation to play. Um, so plus money on Steph Diggs is at least interesting. When or plus one fifteen now, I should say. Um, you know, anytime you get a, a dominant receiver at plus money in an offense is a spot that I'm always considering. Yeah, I think that one is is borderline uh, for me. Yeah, I think it's borderline. Uh, first time he faced New England, he had nine targets in that game, 92 yards. Um, the Bills will have high motivation to win this game, given they want to have that AFC Championship game on a neutral site. So I think they're playing regardless. That's a good thing as well. Um I think that's 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 an interesting I tend to I get very wary of receiver props as they inch closer to even money. That always makes me like very wary running back. I'm a lot more less a fair about. Uh, but for receivers, I get more skittish. But you look, if you look at Stefan Diggs so far this year, he has scored a game, uh, a touchdown in uh, counting all but seven games. So seven of 15 games, he scored in more than half of his games, uh, eight out of 15 games he scored in this year. So. I mean, that's definitely interesting there. I probably wouldn't take it myself, but I believe, you could correct me if I'm wrong, I believe the last time I tried to talk you out of a prop, it was a Tyree kill anytime touchdown, uh, and then he scored like two touchdowns that game. So I didn't talk you out of Mike Evans last week. That didn't happen. No. I didn't try that. Um, but I think I tried to talk you out of Tyree Kill. So if we use the Jim is wrong narrative, digs at like minus 300 is like fair value at this point. So if you're going back to your your point about running backs and their lines or touchdown props, yeah. how do you feel about Derrick Henry at minus 115? Uh, I have the Jags minus six. So okay. those two are uncorrelated. Uh, obviously, and I can't be objective about it. 
Right, I can't uncross my brain out of like I think the Jags. I have the Jags fair by eight in this game, um, which means a they could just throttle the Jags or the Titans, and Titans may not score a whole lot. Um, and b if it's a negative game script, I think Henry should still be in there. If I were coaching, I'd keep him out there as a pass catcher still. But will he be? I think those are two separate things. So if I were looking at that game. You know, ETN's situation is pretty tough um, given how good the Titans rush defense is, but he's he got three targets before he got pulled last week. I think that's kind of intriguing. Um, I think I'd prefer actually ETN over Henry. His red zone role is very good, and that might seem egregious because ETN's minus 110, Henry is minus 115. So it might be un, unearthly dumb to go with ETN over Henry, but I feel like I prefer that one personally. Okay. And then the the last spot that I want to note would be the Steelers. Mm -hmm. They obviously have high motivation, 100%. They need a win. Um, Kenny Pickett's passing prop, last time I saw, is only 195 and a half. He's been inefficient is uh, in some games, I think, is, is the nicest way to put it. But he is throwing the ball a lot. Like We're, we're talking about high volume of passing attempts overall. Right, where, where some of these games, high 30s, low 40s of passing attempts. So the inefficiency is obviously noted. And, you know, we see him crossing this line at a, a very modest rate. It's not like he's blowing past this. But motivation to win, um, high volume of passing. It's a modest number overall. I'm at least intrigued on the Steelers this week is, is the point I'm making. I like that whole team this week. Um, well, yeah, which, I mean, what could go wrong, right? <laughs> what could go wrong with me needing to start uh, Jalen Warren in a in a must win consolation bracket? A lot could go Re- wrong there. Not gonna lie, yeah, a lot could go wrong there. Uh, but with the picket one, I'm fine with that. I think that's totally fine uh, because you mentioned that he's been inconsistent. I think that's totally fair. But he's been like on the whole since their bye week, his efficiency numbers have been good, and that's without Chase Claypool, which. Maybe it's addition by subtraction. Who can say? Um, but like his efficiency in that time has been good, especially in the games that Pat, Pat Frymuth has been there. Um, he had a game that was like a partial game because he got, you know, he got a concussion there, missed right. the next game. But like his broad efficiency numbers, he's been like just a hair below average, which that's not bad for a passing prop under 200. And now David Clowney got sent home uh, yeah, from, this morning. <laughs> from practice this morning for the Browns. He's not going to play. On Sunday, uh, that then I think that benefits both Najee Harris and Kenny Pickett. So Harris actually, I think, is also a spot I'd want to turn to once uh, yardage props are up. They're not up at FanDuel right now, but I think looking at Harris rushing plus receiving numbers, Harris anytime touchdown numbers, uh, Pickett I think is in play. Pat Fry, depending on the number, more so for him. But I think all those guys are very very lively this week. Um, and then the final one for Saturday is. Um, or two for Saturday, both Chiefs players. Okay. Juju is very close to some extra incentives as well. He has 76 receptions and 898 receiving yards. Uh, and he has some incentives to get to, uh, was it a uh, 900 yard, or yeah, over 900 yards. So okay. he needs t- two yards to get an additional $1.5 million. Wow. <laughs> uh, so that's, that's kind of important. Uh, and then Mahomes is approaching the single season passing record. He's 430 yards yeah. away, which is, which is a lot, right? 430 yards is a lot in any game when they could blow out the Raiders. He literally might not need to pass that ball, the ball that many times to get to 430, but it is still noted. Um, it's noted and it's also posted. Um, Patrick Mahomes, three twenty and a half. Uh, no, for four hundred plus passing yards is plus oh. four ninety. If you want to get nuts, though. Well, I'm um, saying his isn't his passing. Yeah, it's, it's three twenty. Three twenty like, and a half. Yeah. In the alt market, if you want to get real crazy, I think plus four ninety is terrible value. But like you know, you could you could talk yourself into that for sure if you want to play the full narrative game. I think that that's uh, that's intriguing for sure. But the you, Juju receiving prop is uh, fifty four and a half. Right. I don't think that's bad at all. That's one I have. Uh, uh, Kirk and Juju, the two I'm going to write up in the article for yeah. tomorrow. I have no objections to either, personally. I, again, I think Zay Jones is also... I pref- probably prefer Kirk by a bit, but there are usages so similar that I could do either and be happy. In Zay Jones' touchdown prop is plus 250. I think I agree with you. I prefer the Kirk one, but Zay Jones is also very in play at plus 250 in that same game. So I think Honestly, Jags and Chiefs props will be very fun. So the the question is, 
the Chiefs obviously need a win to uh-huh. secure the to secure the number one seed. But how like how much are they going to push Mahomes? And then is that enough to? It depends on what you think of Jared Siddham. If you think Siddham's good enough to duplicate what he did last week, then he keeps that game close and forces them to push. But I tend to, I think that was a rally around the flag kind of game where right. they bench the quarterback. Let's show that, you know, we're still fighting. Um, those effects tend to be about a one game thing and then right. they, they dry up real fast. Or like when a coach gets fired and same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like Jeff Saturday wins his first game and they've been abysmal since. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> If that was also the Raiders uh, that they beat in that game. So maybe some some uh, some correlation in there. I think that the so I I've got the Chiefs pretty heavily favored in this game. Um, I haven't bet nine and a half because I've got a little bit. I was like, uh, but like I think nine and a half is like very very much a consideration. And with that being the case, it might scare you away from Mahomes specifically. I don't think the Juju one is concerning because it's it's low enough where it's actually fine. But I think for Mahomes specifically, that's enough where I wouldn't be chasing the the four hundred plus at plus four ninety. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And you know, I would say just as an overall theme, like you know, we're mentioning these different teams. You know, do your research to make sure. You know, like Dallas, Philly, 49ers, Jags, Titans, Chiefs, Bills, Bengals, Ravens, like all these teams, Pats, Dolphins, all these teams need to win. Steelers, uh, uh, Steelers, Seahawks as well. Like they need to win. Yeah. So if push comes to shove and you're saying, okay, I have these two players that I really like, this player could be in for an expanded role because the team is sitting all their starters. It's like, do you have to be going with that team that's eliminated? Right. It's like focus in on the teams and the players that, that truly need to yeah. be winning. You never have to make a bet. You can always just say, nah, I'll wait till the wild card round. You'll like, have a great prop posting then. Like just theoretically, as you mentioned, like KJ Osborne could be in for a nice role. Right. Do but I bother? <laughs> do we need to be going there when you can go to Zay Jones, when you can right. go to some of the secondary players on teams that do need to win? Yeah, there are a lot of teams with motivation this week. So even if we take the 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 Vecchio approach where we narrow down our list and cut off teams that have no motivation, you still got a lot of teams to look at. So personally, I'm on board with you where I'm not like I just doing fewer props this week, which is fine. I have a Lawrence over, uh, but like, you know, not a whole lot for me in general. So um, I think that I'd rather make I'd rather not make a bet than make a bet that I regret. So I think that's always come to my baseline, but um, very comfortable with missing out on stuff for sure. <laughs> Any final thoughts for you in week 18, Tom? Uh, no, I, you know, just double check, uh, double check actives and inactives on yeah. Sunday morning, double check actives and actives for the 4 PM slate, which is obviously also important for teams. Um, you know, do your research, keep everything in line and you should be good to go. Oh, that was one point I wanted to make actually about the chargers. Um, their inactives have to come out, I believe before the end of the Ravens yeah, game, 90 minutes beforehand, which means Eckler might be active and then not play. Correct. So, and if he's active, the props count. So, and same thing with uh, with Brady. Like, if they announce right. that he's starting or he's active, and the right. props come out, it's all unders. Right. So, based on FanDuel's house rules, those would stand. Um, so that's where I'd look. If he winds up being active, that's where you want to. If again, if props are posted, which they might not be, um, but that's where I'd be looking for sure. All righty. That is Tom Vecchio. Tom, appreciate the time. Thank you as always. And we'll be talking to you about some NBA. Starting next week on Wednesday, I am looking forward to that. Uh, Good luck for you in week 18. We'll talk to you then. Thanks so much for having me. Check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sign. Again, check out our national championship preview and our week 18 money line spreads and totals previews both up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and on the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll talk to you all once again next week. Good luck in week 18. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 